Hi, I'm James Lees. I'm out here on the edge of the rather beautiful River Severn. Welcome to another episode of Wildlife Weekly. Well, in last week's episode, we looked at some of the many orchids here on site. And this week, we're going to look at a couple more uh, that we didn't get a chance to look at last week. But this is one of the hardest species of orchid to find here, and that's the common tway blade. And this is it here. This is as colourful as it gets um, with its green flowers. You look very, very carefully at each one. I actually think they look like little aliens. Uh, but the reason the plant's called tway blade is um, it's quite different to the other orchids we've been looking at. It's got these two very big, broad, pointy uh, leaves at the base. So uh, that's a really good one to look out for. This species here is called the pyramidal orchid and uh, the reason it's named that is the, the shape of the flower always grows the flowers out at the base and then they gradually come out towards the top. And uh, these are lovely up close actually, each individual flower head looks a bit like a lady uh, wearing a dress and a, and a bonnet on top. Well this nice bit of footage was sent in to us by Giles and uh, here we can see green sandpipers. Uh, although most people are thinking it's the summer time now, uh, really whenever we see green sandpipers um, we know that that autumn migration has begun and these birds breed up in Scandinavia during the summer time. Called green sandpipers because they get an iridescent green shine uh, to the feathers particularly on their back and uh, these birds really do turn up uh, bang on this week every year, the last week of June. Um, really, really good numbers of them turn up, particularly from hides like the Robbie Garnet hide, uh, where they're feeding on the, uh, the shallow water there, which we deliberately drop this time of year uh, to create the ideal feeding conditions for them. Well, avocets have been a, a really important feature of our reserve this year, and uh, this classic wetland species uh, is here in really, really good numbers at the moment. Um, three years ago, we had our first ever breeding pair at Slimbridge, and this year the numbers uh, keep increasing. We've got birds which have already had one uh, brood of youngsters and are now uh, settled down and, and have actually reared uh, a second lot. So we can see small young uh, out about in the reserve at the moment, and also fully grown fledged young We're from the first brood. So we've got uh, a mixture of different ages and different size avocets. Uh, but amazingly, uh, really every single hide you go into on site at the moment, you'll see avocet. Absolutely superb success story. Well, both myself and many visitors coming here are really enjoying our Greater Flamingo exhibit at the moment. And I'm going to pass you over to Paul Rose, who's doing his PhD on the Greater Flamingo, and he'll be able to explain a lot more of the behaviour we're seeing. So as James says, it really is a very good time to pop down to Flamingo Lagoon at the moment and to observe the greater flamingos. Um, and what I think is, is really quite unique about the picture that is offered to visitors is that we are actually able to see every aspect of the flamingo's uh, courtship and breeding cycle. So we have birds that are doing their head flagging, which is right at the start of courtship, where they move their heads from side to side, make themselves look as big and as beautiful as possible to try and uh, attract a mate to birds that are sitting on eggs. So they have paired up, they have found a partner and they are incubating their eggs. And then through to birds that have uh, their chicks which they're gonna go and rear. So because of the, the large flock that we have here at Slimbridge and the large enclosure, the birds which have started breeding have encouraged other birds which probably haven't thought so much about breeding this year to think about doing more of their courtship display. So be sure to check out this spectacle uh, when you come and visit. So flamingos are a wetland species, um, same as ducks, geese and swans, and they have webbed feet and they can go swimming. And what we have found are some of the chicks that have been enjoying the hot weather and going for a little paddle in the shallower areas of the lagoon. And flamingo chicks hang around in groups called creches. And if one member of the creche decides to go and do something, the other chicks will probably go and follow it. So if the hot weather continues, you'll probably see our flamingo chicks are going for their first swim. Well, we're in the very height of the summer now, and this is an excellent time to get out looking for insects, particularly dragonflies. Uh, many of those uh, different dragonflies are on the wing at the moment, uh, as are the butterflies. So it's a really good time of year to get out and try and find as many of them as you can. Weather-wise, uh, we've had a sustained period of uh, high pressure for a long time, 
and uh, next few days is looking a little bit more unsettled, more cloud and the wind from the east. And that's actually excellent conditions to look for migratory birds, particularly waders coming back from the Arctic. Um, if it is cloudy, that will uh, prevent them from migrating and the birds will actually drop into our uh, scrapes and uh, the estuary here behind me. So it's a really excellent uh, week to be looking out for wading birds. If you've enjoyed this video, share it with your friends and followers on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and see our website for further details. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with your friends and followers on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> no?